they're just having insufficient team fight. Newbie is a team that likes to fight all the time. They like to play together as five, but when they have the weaker team fighting lineup, I feel like that becomes really difficult. But this game, they have absolutely spectacular team fight. I really like the way that their lineup works, and I feel like Planet Odd, their safe lane and just their their team fight in general is pretty weak. They really lack a lot of front line. Yeah, I mean, Newbie's got lockdown for days. If they can actually go and, and find their target and get one stun off, then they can just keep them locked down until Newbie are able to rotate in their damage dealers. So potentially a lot of blood falling off. And what are the tempos of these two teams looking like? Who wants to get online and mobile first? Uh, I think well, it's interesting, but I think Planet Odd are actually the ones who need to try and strike first here. Uh, start getting those Sunstrike kills rolling in for Wii because as soon as the Newbie lineup hits like 10 minutes, like the panel was saying, that's where they can just really start five manning. They've got three really beefy cores that are going to be difficult to burst down at all stages of the game, and it's going to be insanely difficult to get to the supports in the back lines as a result. The healing ward's going to be down, the underlord's going to be standing there, more than likely with a, you know, a mech ready to go, so uh, Planet Odd, I think, really have to get off to a good start, otherwise the Night Stalker's not going to do anything, the Crystal Maiden's not going to do anything, and the Invoker's not going to do anything either. So deep smoke rotation here from Newbie. Looks like they just want to give some contest to the room. Potentially trying to initiate onto Misery here. This Night Stalker could be the boots. first blood. Puck is going to make his way in with the Illusory Orb. And now Kaka actually caught it on his own. Though Moogie rotates forward. Still holding onto the Blade Fury. So currently no blood shed. The runes are going to be a, uh, a three for Newbie. And only one going the way of Planet Odds. So slight gold advantage there as Newbie just start making those big rotations early. Yeah, so nice read from Planet Odd. Realizing that Newbie were likely to go for an aggressive tri lane. But I feel like this is obvious just from the beginning of the draft. You pick Crystal Maiden and Night Stalker, you have two heroes that don't even want to spend time with your carry. The Crystal Maiden wants to go in jungle a little bit, and the Night Stalker wants to rotate around in the lane. So they pick the Clinks, who's a pretty good 1v1 hero, uh, can kind of just do his own thing, uh, and that frees up the supports a little bit more, because this is not a tri lane versus tri lane that they were going to win. Oh, bottom is getting really heated. Moon getting very, very low, able to jump back with that Illusory Orb, but I mean, this is going to be a bloody bot lane. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a decent amount of action. Uh, the only problem, I think, for Misery being down here is that I'm not sure how much kill potential there necessarily is for him in this lane, but you know, the same can kind of be said for, for Newbie's other lanes. I guess with the Sunstrike, uh, maybe an, a gank against the Underlord is pretty feasible, especially given that the Crystal Maiden is hanging out up there uh, at the moment as well. And they do have some nice heroes to utilize the Crystal Maiden aura on all three lanes for extra farm. Clinks can harass a little bit more with Searing Arrows. They can spam more Alacrities for Weeha to get farm against the Dragonite and negate the Breathe Fire uh, minus damage. And Moon can also just throw out a couple more Illusory Orbs here and there to be able to pick up a little bit of extra farm against this really difficult, aggressive tri lane. What's Misery's plan going to be for that first night time? Because Night Stalkers now with that daytime nerf, they need to get so active as soon as that sun goes down. Yeah, he, he really does. It looks like at the moment, you know, just focusing on getting some levels. It's really going to depend on the position of the game. If Newbie maintain their lanes here, then I feel like that gank against the Underlord is still a pretty solid option. But Newbie may also end up swapping their lanes at some point, uh, just if they want to try and keep more pressure on this Clinks. So we'll have to see. Moogie's taking some pretty big right-click damage from Misery here. Yeah, he's been playing up really aggressive for a Juggernaut, even just at level one or two, but still keeping himself alive, definitely gauging what Planet Odd have and playing around that pretty well. Yeah, so the one big thing that he's probably looking at here is that he knows that the Night Stalker came to the lane with relatively little regen, uh, and kind of the same situation for the Puck, so knowing that he has a salve, Tangos and oh, Sunstrike coming the sun in top. Strike. KP going to be walking right on through it. Searing Arrows not doing enough, just a couple hits short, and there's going to be a TP back home. So Planet On making a lot of space for themselves in the top lane, but they haven't been able to secure that first blood yet. Oh, that would have been a 100% kill there, but it looks like we might just fall here on the mid lane now. Haka. He's got boots, however, so all right, he's going to be OK. Sand King, he's got to go for the Burrow Strike of the Century here, but we makes it uphill in time. But yeah, the Dragonite doing really well on this mid lane. 19 and 9, his CS against the uh, 10 and 2 of the Invoker. So. Uh, we certainly feeling a little bit of pressure. It does have a nice ward over on the other side of the river to try and scout some of these support rotations. And Radiant Scan used right on top of their tier one tower. I don't know if that was a little bit of a misclick. Uh, or maybe they were hoping to find. off the map right there yeah. and just trying to make sure the Sand King's not waiting for a Burrow Strike. Yeah, I, I think they just could have put it a little bit further to the right if they wanted to check whether there was supports in that tree line. Oh, Misery going to try to make his way back under tower, but we'll get glimpsed back now. Gets locked in. This is what we were talking about. If Newbie actually go and find their prey, it's so hard for them to run away. They can just keep throwing stuns at you, and that will be a first blood going the way of Newbie. And our crowd may be a little bit biased here. They are starting to get real excited for Newbie. Yeah, this is already looking pretty bad for Planet Odd. 
Uh, I mean, they do still have that Nighttime coming up soon, but the Night Stalker is only level 2 right now. Uh, so not going to be the most effective rotations from him. Crystal Maiden just kind of doing the standard aura build. So her contribution is really uh, just giving the heroes the means to kind of, in theory, win their lanes. And I mean, Planet Odd are getting pretty good farm across the board. So it's not all doom and gloom, but this newbie lineup is just so fast once it gets rolling. They can take all of the outer towers on the map in like less than 25 minutes this game. Uh, if their lineup works the way that they want oh. it to. Now we hasted up and they do have Soxa waiting here in the mid lane, so SCCC could be in trouble as, yeah, that's the first nighttime rotation we needed. The meatball comes through, he's clipped, and it looks like SCCC is just counting his last moments. A couple more right clicks go through and he will fall to Weeha. Now return in, Faith comes forward, maybe trying to defend that mid, but instead just gets himself down to with third health and, well, nice uh, follow up there from Planet Odd. Kill score yeah. evened out at 1-1 and that's some desperately needed space for Weeha now. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely going to be a very important kill for him, given that his farm is still only looking kind of all right. It's not so much about how the laning stage phase uh, plays out, but it's about maintaining control over their towers, oh, so that he still has the jungle to farm. He's a, he's a tanky boy. He should be okay, and they just don't want to invest all their resources to follow up. Misery still wants to make the most out of that night time, but they can't get too crazy. Where they want to start showing their stride is, you know, that 15 to 20 minute mark. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're still kind of looking to be aggressive at every single nighttime opportunity that they have, just to tr stop newbie from grouping up, I think that's really the big, the big thing for Odd here. I, I really don't know if they win five on five team fights before the point where the Invoker is just completely maxed and can kind of do everything by himself. So that's really what Odd are, are playing for here, especially with the fact that they last picked the Invoker. They're showing some confidence in Weeha's ability to take over this game if they give him the right start, and that's what the rest of the lineup is really looking to do right now. I think even the Clink's pick plays into that a lot with being able to split push, go and find pickoffs, and, and stop the newbie five man in theory. How's Clink's going to be itemizing here? Is he just going to go for the early Atos into Bloodthorn, or is it going to be some, some sh or rather uh, Orchid into Bloodthorn? Um, oh, KP in a little bit of trouble down here. Might get Sunstruck, going to try and dodge it, but Oh, Firestorm to try to make himself some space, but Resolution still gets the kill, so nice uh, pump up for that Clink's. And now Faith getting low, but not going to be able to go for the follow-up. Soxa continues the chase. Frostbite up in one second, but can he get vision? Can he get range? He will be able to go and find the kill on the Disruptor. Nice play there from the Maiden. Get the most out of that low early mana pool. Man, that rotation really hurt Newbie. They lose their, you know, lose the support, but they were also really hoping to push up that hill and be able to go and get a ward down to maybe set up uh, for a tier one tower push in that safe lane a little bit later on. But with that, you know, the, the ward's not down. They're lacking a little bit of vision on the map other than one ward that they have over at mid lane, which is just barely out of range of this sentry, in fact. So uh, a little bit of bad luck for Odd in placing that one. But I, I think this early game is starting to look all right for Odd. Misery actually getting a lot done out of this first night time. And that gank on the Dragon Knight mid was so nicely set up uh, by Sox. It looks like it was really well you know, they thought about it ahead of time for Odd. They were probably saying, okay, as soon as this nighttime hits, Crystal Maiden's going to be waiting up on this hill, uh, and she'll be ready to rotate down, and the three heroes was more than enough to, to grab that kill. As newbie, they've got the level six on the Dragon Knight, so it looks like they're keen for a, a bit of a pick and push here. Yeah, he's still going to be top of the CS chart as well, so Dragon Knight doing well, but he's got to start uh, using that lead to get something done in bottom lane. Looks like Resolution's about to be ganked. One Dust was used already in the mid lane, so we'll have to see if the cooldown's on that, or yeah, it's, it's going to be ready right now. Yeah, and he's just hiding over in the trees right now. Faith still has a little bit of this smoke left. Might be able to detect him, but doesn't walk far enough, ner uh, far enough north. So won't be able to yeah, figure out that Resolution is just hiding in the trees. And it looks like Newbie still keen to try and get some damage on this tower. So S Triple C going to pop the ultimate. Uh, and the odd support smoked over at mid lane, anticipating that somebody's probably going to TP in to try and defend this against the Invoker. But looks like... Newbie not interested in doing so right now. KP actually just continuing to push at the bottom lane, not going to go and uh, spam the Firestorm mid. Faith makes his way forward. There's the Frostbite to go in, and yeah, this Disruptor is so squishy. Resolution drops two arrows, and that's going to be done. Now Kaka is right there in the vicinity. SCCC pops the Dragon form, and Resolution's in trouble, is dusted up, takes a Dragon Tail to the face, and they're holding that Burrow Strike for a little more lockdown. They don't get the Crystal Maiden with the Burrow Strike, and now Resolution's going to go TP out. He knows they use their stuns, and he's going to be able to get home free. Very well done there. The Sox is going to be running for the hills here. That Crystal Maiden's fresh out of mana. Has a TP, though. Just needs to find a safe place to go. So she's bailing out into the trees as fast as possible. It's looking difficult that she actually makes it all the way home. Yeah, looking like Sox is, Sox is pretty dead here. <laughs> little pick up Omni for Omni Slash, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised to see the Omni Slash used like that. But uh, 
I guess Moogie just kind of itching to use it and continue on farming. Uh, really nice for Planet All that they managed to find a tower trade against this newbie lineup because I think that's the the one thing that the panel talked about the split push potential from Planet Odd a little bit, but I feel like this Underlord, if played correctly, can really shut down a lot of those split pushing options because he has the opportunity to, you know, while they're pushing a tower, immediately TP the entire lineup in on a, a tier one that's being or at any tower that's being pressured, or he can go and kind of defend by himself and then be ready to dark rift into his team if they need his help. So. Uh, it'll depend a lot on how comfortable KP's feeling on this this Underlord. It's not a hero that people have been playing a ton recently. So. Oh, Resolution. This is a nice kill uh -oh. for him. Just going to be a couple of arrows, and yeah, it's just uh, waiting for the old one, two. A couple more, and that's going to be Soxa fed a nice kill there, so making sure the CM can get up some nice support items. Yeah, this is definitely a really nice game for the Crystal Maiden to get a Glimmer Cape going or a, or a Force Staff, so... Uh, I don't know if that was 100% intentional from Resolution to give the kill over to the support, but I think it actually ends up working out pretty nicely on the whole. Uh, you asked about Klinx's itemization this game. I feel like he's probably going to go for fairly standard stuff. He has picked up the Soul Ring. I think it's still imp well, I don't know how important the Soul Ring is 100% when you've got the Crystal Maiden Arcane Aura as well, but certainly not a bad item, and I think maybe heading into a... Uh, Deso, something along those lines after that. He does grab the Ring of Aquila here just for a little bit more lane pressure. And they don't have any other hero to buy it, so pretty value for him to grab it. I mean, how lethal is this Klinks if you just sit back and let him farm? Because it seems like newbie really aren't making him their top priority right now. Klinks isn't really a hero that actually flash farms that quickly, and the, the change to his death pact was actually kind of a nerf to his overall farming on Sunstrike. Sunstrike comes in. Kaka going to dodge the Sunstrike, and now his team's there for backup as Moon tries to go in for the TP, but the glimpse back will hold him in place, and now Puck, ooh, potentially in some trouble. Resolution, meanwhile, does pop Kaka bot lane, but here at this top shrine, the fight is just getting started. Night Stalker moves in. It's daytime, though, so he can't quite give it his all. One pile dra Dragon Breath will take out the Puck, and now Resolution running for his life makes it past the shrine, and now there's a the Frostbite. Omni Slash to bounce around. Crystal Maiden eating up a lot of it. Soxa gets low. Will eventually fall to one more hit from the Dragon Knight. The Meatball comes through. And SCCC is going to trade his life for this. The negative Urn rocking. And Misery keeps hot on his heels. But Kaka looking to set up a Burrow Strike. Will catch the Night Stalker. And SCCC, he's home free. The Urn won't do enough damage to take him out. Misery has to contend with this Firestorm in the Pit of Malice. So Night Stalker held in place. The Dragon Knight lived. Sunstrike, oh! oh! Just right on the edge there. Very, very close. Oh man, that was that was sick from Wee, and that's going to be, I mean, that's a lot of acceleration from that last fight. He's already got the Midas, he's got 2k gold towards his Aghanim Scepter, and that was just not what Newbie were looking for there. The Shrine happened to come up, it looks like, in the middle of that fight, so they were able to pop it, Resolu Resolution able to get the turnaround, you know, had the Death Pact running the entire time, and this is not the way that Newbie were hoping the early game was going to go. They've only taken one tower so far, uh, they don't even have the mech just yet, on the Underlord, so their five man isn't necessarily online, and the two supports kind of struggling right now. You know, Newbie, Faith, and uh, Kaka have been running around trying to make plays happen, but they've, for the most part, been unsuccessful. And the Disruptor is just such a such a bad hero to play <laughs> from behind. This is a game where he's just going to get munched by the clinks non-stop if they can't five man. He has to play in the buddy system right now. And we're yeah. talking about how Newbie's team fight is phenomenal, but right now Planet Odd's positioning is so good and now we just take over to nighttime and misery. He's hungry. He's gonna do the hunt and yeah, see what he finds. Yeah he's got his urn up, so a little bit of extra damage there. Uh, hasn't skilled the ultimate just yet. Ha does have the point up in the crippling fear pretty handy against the uh, the Sand King and the jug and whatnot, so not too surprised to see that. And yeah, I mean, Planet Odd controlling the map very nicely. They, like I said, the way that they win this game is going aggressive and being active early and then stopping Newbie from ever really grouping up and five manning. Yeah, really nice deep boards from the Radiant as well, scouting out movements around the Ancient Pits. And well, here, top tower, the action's going to be going down. Clink showing no mercy, just laying in the arrows. And now Moon uh -huh. will get some scouting vision. Sees KP there. Do they know Faith is in the trees? Uh, I don't think so. KP does also have the Dark Rift up, so even though his TP is on cooldown, he does have a potential escape here. Moogie is split pushing bottom a little bit as Moon is going to come TPing in, so that should be a sign for Newbie to group up top and try and take this opportunity since they know that they can force a 4v5. And yeah, you look at SCCC and Kaka, they're running forward. There's the smoke. They know someone's going to be down on the low ground, just a matter of who they can catch. The Invoker makes his way out. There's going to be a deep ward play so they can scout any rotations up past that tier 2 tower, but for now, it's just going to be newbie taking their opportunity to go and push structures. Yeah, that was a that was a nice 
nice little play from Nubi, pressuring the one lane where they already had a tier one down, and kind of taking advantage of the fact that they have a tier one taken on a side lane, whereas Planet Odd have a tier one taken on the mid lane, where it's actually much easier for Nubi to respond. And you know, if you have a hero TP over to defend mid, they're only one lane away from going back to one of the side lanes and continuing to push. But the oh. fact that they, uh, the, you know, they kind of split pressure works out pretty nicely. Well, courier attempt from Klinks, but going to be just a little bit too slow. Now, they're just going to segue this right into a tier 2 tower push, and it seems like Planet Odd have to defend this. Moon still taking his time down there in the bot lane. Sunstrike comes in, just going to be starting to chunk KP down, but I mean, that Underlord still relatively tanky. Moogie just spinning away, continuing to slap at the tower. Pit and Malice goes, they lock down the Night Stalker. He's in trouble now, his teammates are not going to be able to help him. The Meatball comes in, Moogie is going to be getting low. Glimpse back onto Weeha, but there's no follow-up there. So they get what they want. They pick off the Night Stalker, and they know that that makes Planet Odd's initiation so much more difficult. That's going to be not only a Tier 1, not only a Night Stalker pick, but a Tier 2 as well. Yeah, I don't even know if uh, Planet Odd got outmaneuvered a little bit there, but I don't know if they're that unhappy with how that played out. Uh, Weeha got some decent farm. He's about 800 gold away from his Aghanim Scepter, which is a potential first timing for him to exploit. Resolution got some really nice damage on the Tier 2. He'll be able to pick that up a little bit later on, and... Planet Odd, you know, not, not too far behind. In fact, holding on to a net worth and experience lead right now, uh, though I feel like the, you know, the newbie five manning is only just beginning. They've now picked up the mech on the Underlord, so their team fight, scary as it was to begin with, just got even more potent. Yeah, the net worth is, you know, getting close to that even mark. It was kind of creeping up towards that 2,000 mark for Odd, but mm -hmm. now it's, uh, you know, dropping right back down after that pick in the, uh, the tier, tier 2 tower and the Night Stalker. So quick pause, hopefully just working out some uh, some lag issues or something, but getting right back into it. So, I mean, how content are Newbie right now? They had a bit of a fumble in the laning stage, but uh, you know, now that the first early night times are done, are they just gonna be coming back and five manning and running at Odd and, and trying to catch him with their pants down? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the plan. The next sort of 10, 15 minutes of the game are gonna decide a lot, and they're mostly going to be decided by, I would say, Ward Vision, smokes and overall map positioning. That's really going to create the opportunities because I still don't know if Odd are, are all that keen on taking a 5-on-5. Five five. They do have the blink up on Moon now, so they have uh, some kind of a, an opportunity to be able to take a team fight, but I think initiating for them is going to be pretty difficult. Maybe they can get the clinks in, he can scout, uh, and then the Puck can jump into the back lines and they can blow up the two supports, which is maybe the point where Newbie's team fight crumbles a little bit without those two big AOE ultimates. Uh, but other than that, I feel like the Puck is mostly going to be counter-initiating, and that's where the problem of Odd's lineup, where they don't necessarily have an amazing frontliner, like Night Stalker can kind of frontline, and Clinks, if he's far enough ahead, maybe he's survivable enough to eat a couple of spells and then have the Puck come in and, and turn things around. But I, I think that lack of a real you know, a real frontliner from their off lane is going to hurt the you know, the angles of initiation on these team fights. So I think they still mostly have to just play for play for vision, play for pickoffs, uh, and play to try and keep newbies split up. Yeah, so we are back into the game now. Hopefully uh, just gonna keep rolling smoothly here. How you know, how often do newbie want to fight? Are they All ultimate the cooldown reliant, or do they just want to charge in even without an epicenter, without a dragon form? Uh, th I think it's mostly around the dragon form. They do have, you know, they do have some ultimates that they have to wait for here and there, but they're not the most, you know, they're not the longest cooldowns in the game necessarily as far as ultimates go. So I think you'll see newbie making uh, a lot of plays together, but. You know, as you can see, Odd are start starting to split push effectively. We are going to be able to take out this tier one tower up at top. Gets the last hit, only 150 gold away from his Aghanim scepter now. And I feel like we're still yet to really see the power of this Underlord in terms of his ability to use the Dark Rift and and move his team around on the map to create better laning uh, pressure situations. So we'll see if that ends up working out for them as they move forward. Some newbie rotating in. I mean, really setting themselves up in this mid lane. You can see they've got good ward vision there. They're bringing in the jug healing ward in case there was a jump. And uh, meanwhile, Misery is going to be split pushing top. Still nighttime. He's still in his element. And uh, do you think Planet Odd are going to commit to this top tower, or is there just no way they can actually take it in time? Oh, there's the Dark Rift. Uh, they don't see any heroes on the map right now, so they're a little bit afraid of rotations in from newbie or a smoke pincering them from the mid lane. So. They are just going to back it up. Though Siege Creep with the Alacrity gets a decent amount of damage onto the Tier 2, in fact, so 
You know, still a nice little bit of chip without any commitment really whatsoever from Wii. And he's just going to keep on going for the, the kind of split push build, uh, going for Boots of Travel. Now, sometimes you'll see Invokers, if they feel like they're ahead and they feel like their team can win team fights, they'll go straight for a Blink Dagger in this situation and then just jump in uh, and sort of win fights. But the Boots of Travel, great farming item, great for applying split pressure on these side lanes and... You know, I feel like this tier 1 tower bottom uh, for Newbie is probably not long for this world. The other thing that Odd might be able to do that might catch Newbie off guard is actually maybe steal a Roshan once they have the Desolator up on the Clinks. I don't believe they're building towards a Medallion anywhere on the lineup, so it won't be the easiest thing in the world to take. And it looks like, well, Newbie not even going to give them that opportunity as they're just going to head straight into the pit themselves. This Firestorm is insane against Roshan. It's percentage. After the yeah, it's still percentage based on Roshan. It, it's right? like the only percentage based ability that still works on Roshan for oh. whatever reason. Sunstrike comes in, not going to hit anyone, but I mean, Planetodon definitely know what's up. They can't respond though, they just can't get in there quick enough because Firestorm, like you mentioned, just evaporates Rosh. That is a phenomenally quick Rosh for this lineup. Yeah, and now the TP down bottom, successfully defending. Oh, it sure has. Yeah, <laughs> Roshan down. And that's a pretty big deal for Newbie. That's going to signal the next five minutes of aggression for them. Uh, and that Aegis is even going to extend a little bit into this next nighttime, which might give them an opportunity to negate some of the nighttime strength of Planet Odd. Their lineup is starting to get really beefy. That's the other big problem. You don't really want to go on the Underlord. He's extremely difficult to burst. The Dragonite is kind of the same story. Uh, and the Jug now with the Aegis, also not an amazing target. So... Uh, I worry for, for Planet Odd a little bit, and when these fights drag out, their sustained damage isn't that amazing. Once the Strafe runs out for the Clinks, once the Invoker drops his first volley of spells, once the Puck does the same, I feel like they don't continue the team fight quite as well as, as Newbie do. Yeah, I mean, Underlord, he had a really fast mech timing. He's now got mech, arcanes, and the, uh, the staff for his four staff, so he is exceptionally farmed. Yeah, the, I, I like the four staff pickup here. I think it helps keep him safe if he's going to be solo defending lanes. And oh, oh Moon. here we go. Moon went, tried to get aggressive on Moon, Moogie, but look at that lockdown. Puck is uh, trying to go phase shift himself out of trouble, but it's uh, it's going to be pretty difficult for him. Tries to jaunt to the ore, but it's not going to be quick enough. He goes down, and meanwhile, Underlord was taken out by Resolution down there in the bot lane, and there's a TP in from the Dragonite. Resolution is just going to scoot himself out. I mean, it feels like Clinks is definitely still playing a solo game. Is that going to change for Planet Odd, or do they need him, you know, on one half of the map, the rest of the team on the other? Uh, I think I just need to reiterate re the point about this game is all about the Invoker for Odd. It's all about getting the Invoker to the point where he completely takes over the game. So until Weeha makes the call and says, guys, I'm insanely strong, I have my Octarine Core, I have my Lincoln Sphere, uh, you know, I have my Blink Dagger, I don't really think that Odd are interested in actually taking a five on fight, a five on five fight until that point. So, yeah, the Clinks will join them once that happens. But right now, we're just kind of watching Weeha push out lanes, and every item that he grabs increases his split push potential just that little bit more. So his, his farm is going to continue to accelerate as the game goes on. Right, deep rotation here from Newbie. Resolution going to be the one to push up onto the cliff and show himself. And looks like they might want to initiate on that puck and send an orb forward and Faith clipped by it. Seems like Planet Odd, they're just going to let Newbie try and set up their positioning and then respond to it once they're kind of there already. And nighttime's coming up soon, but again, goal is really to split them up, so we just going to keep on pressuring at top. Resolution is coming in from behind here at, at mid lane, however, but is he actually going to try and make something happen? It's all about whether or not Moon can get the initiation. I think they really need a smoke for him to, to do anything. Now, Fortify is spent here, so if Planet Odd have a really botched initiation and drop a couple of big kills, this potentially could be Tier 3s. Yeah, they're, they're not quite in the position that I was expecting them to be. Resolution was kind of moving over towards top. I don't know if he was hoping to set up a kill with Weeha, anticipating that the defense from Newbie might come a little bit earlier, but he really needed to be bottom. Looks like he is going to be able to come and backdoor this Tier 1 tower, but he's just waiting to see a few more heroes on the map. It's only the Jug showing right now, so he's a little bit afraid that there might be you know, a Sand King lurking nearby, but he will poke his nose out here and, and finish it off. Yep, nice little chunk of gold. And I mean, Planet Odd, they are still holding on to the kill lead, but uh, and the net worth lead, rather. But it seems like Newbie are just so much more in control of the map, the positioning, and the pace of this game. Yeah, Newbie certainly have the better wards right now. I think Planet Odd really wish that they had some more Observer wards kind of on the shrine uh, over in the Dire Jungle and also over towards that top tier two, just so that their heroes would feel a little bit more safe to utilize these three camps over on the sort of western side 
of the dire jungle, but without any vision over the, the shrines and any potential rotations from that push that happened mid lane, they're going to have to abandon that farm and uh, you know, just sort of keeping pace with the, the newbie cores right now a, as opposed to pushing further and further ahead. And looks like Weha actually feeling very pressured this game, maybe thinking that they're running out of time. He's actually just going to be queuing up a BKB on his quick buy here, so I guess odd feeling as though they're... Yeah, they're, they're in a little bit of trouble. And I think that that is somewhat accurate. You know, once the Invoker hits his peak, they're going to have to do a lot. But past that, I think the newbie lineup actually scales a little bit better. And they haven't been pressured into buying BKBs at all yet. Oh. So Here we go. Smoke attempt is completely thwarted by Misery's positioning. And they're going to dust to make sure it wasn't a clinks right there. Misery going to go for the TP out, and they won't be able to catch him. Meanwhile, it's not looking like the Crystal Maiden will have the same uh, lucky fortune there. So Crystal Maiden hits the deck, but very good job by Planet Odd positioning themselves in a way that totally thwarts that rotation from Newbie. Uh, Planet Odd really. OK, so they've at least gotten the ward over at the, the Dire Shrine. Uh, so that's a little bit more information for Wii, but they really want to plant these deep wards so that they can keep scouting their rotations from uh, from Newbie. They are at the very least kind of wasting a lot of this Aegis duration, so that's good news for them. But again, it's unfortunate that that's the way that they're having to play uh, during the nighttime oh, and up clinks. They're able to go get him. They get the dust on him as well. The glimpse back holds him up onto the cliff, and there's going to be the dragon tail to keep him pinned down. Oh, man, this is just middle school bully tier where they just keep him smashed up against a locker and he can't run. The glimpse back, the burrow strike, the dragon tail. He's just done forever. Yeah, really nice from Newbie putting the Observer Ward and the Sentry Ward together. And now with Resolution dead for 40 seconds and a little bit of the Aegis duration left, it looks like they are going to try and go for the high ground. We making the same play over the top side along with Moon. They know that they can't fight without uh, without the clink, so they're going to have to try and force them back. But this is the strength of the Underlord in this situation. He can defend and still be ready to Dark Rift mid. Yeah, he's got a ability to hop quickly. So Tier 3 Tower is taken out with pretty little uh, resistance from Odd. Now Puck goes in, lands a Dream Coil, but immediately picked off by a beautiful Static Storm from Faith, whose positioning is perfect down there on the low ground. So now Rax exposed. SCCC on the run as the Ford Spirit starts shipping at him. There is going to be, oh, the initiation for the Sand King gets the three-man burrow strike. Everyone getting chewed down by the epicenter. It's Misery trying to run, but held in place. Oh, no, it's not looking good for Planet Odd right now. They lost two big heroes for some buybacks. Now there's going to be another burrow strike trying to hold the puck back, but Moon's still alive. We running for his life. The Night Stalker comes back in, and they are able to take down the Dragonite, who does not have buyback. Sunstrike comes forward, won't hit on anyone, but it looks like Planet Odd know they have to push now. They've got to go get whatever they can at a newbie. There is going to be a nice little pit of malice holding everyone in place there, and, well, a couple of arrows does take out the Disruptor. So it will eventually be a relatively even trade, but, man, newbie just got what they wanted out of that. They got the Tier 3, they can take the Shrines, and they force three buybacks. That was absolutely amazing for newbie. Like I said, it's, it's wards that are going to win this game that were going to win the battle of... Uh, breaking up the back and forth on the lanes in terms of, you know, Newbie trying to get the catch and Planet Odd constantly going for the split push. And as soon as they get rid of the big split pusher, Newbie blow the game wide open. And even though they didn't get the lane of Rax, I think they're still insanely happy with uh, how that played out. And yeah, Planet Odd still, still sort of at this point not able to control the map the way that they want, and they're just going to have to hope that this double BKB timing from Weha and Resolution is enough for them to start winning the fights and, and win the game, because it looks like this pickoff plan is not going to work against Newbie. And if Newbie wanted to, they could even pick up a gem soon and completely restrict the map control. And in fact, they do already have that gem over on Kaka, so Planet Odd's wards are, are not going to be able to get very deep onto the map, and as a result, they're not going to really be able to split push, because they won't know where the Newbie heroes are. Planet Odd, they gotta get active here. They are gonna scan and see that the Dragon Knight was taking Ancients. So SECC in some trouble. We'll get silenced up and held in place by the Dream Coil, but can they keep him locked down? Looks like Misery's on it. They got the Frostbite going as well, so that's gonna be a nice pick on the Dragon Knight. And that's now two deaths right in a row for him, as he did die right, right after taking that Tier 3. All right, Odd, Odd get aggressive. I don't know if that was necessarily... That was probably a little bit unexpected for Newbie, given the way that Odd have been playing the last couple of minutes, but... Yeah, it looks like they really want this tier 2 tower. That's going to bring Weeha pretty close to his BKB. Uh, and it looks like Resolution might have his completed as well. All right, so this is a strong timing for Odd. Uh, we'll see if this is going to be enough for them to, to win a team fight. If it's not, if two, if two 10 second BKBs is not enough, then I, I really worry for them. Ooh. Oh, oh, Tornado almost catches that Sand King. They are going to Sun Strike him, but he'll be uh, back in base nice and safe. So big rotation from Odd. They totally bail out of the top lane, and now they're just going to try to push it in top. Only one tier two on the dire side of the map. They just got to go and take out that mid lane. 
Yeah, I, I feel like the game plan is so much more straightforward for newbie at this stage than it is for odd. They can go and claim the shrines, they can probably claim the Roche pretty easily, uh, and then at that point I think the next Aegis and a Cheese sort of cements this game. Oh. Oogie in some trouble. Yeah, pops the immediate Manta, now trying to Blade Fury's Sunstrike. way to freedom the Sunstrike coming in, it will finish him off! Nice play there from Wii, and they're going to continue to follow up. Kaka going to go break that Dream Coil, and now Pit Lord trying to go and uh, lead the front line of this fight, gets silenced up, and now there's going to be a defensive Static Storm, just trying to zone out Resolution, I guess, but this tower is still extremely vulnerable, one more hit will take it out. So now no more Tier 2s, keeping Newbie's Tier 3 safe. Yeah, all well, these... <laughs> I didn't think Odd were going to be able to get pickoffs, but... They've, they've proved me wrong time and time again. It looks like they're actually going to be the ones who are able to go over and, and try and secure this Roshan. No buyback available for the Jug. Resolution is a little bit late to the party, uh, but I think they still have more than enough damage to, to bring this down. Yeah, it's no Firestorm, but they'll still be able to get yep. themselves in. Now, that's going to be a Dark Rift getting them in. So KP leading up the front lines, but it's not in time. They go, they snap themselves up in Aegis for Wii. And uh, who's holding on to Cheese here? Uh, probably the Invoker, yeah. Weeha does have it in his backpack right now. D actually ends up passing it over to the Clinks, and yeah, it's Weeha with the Aegis, so. All right. Um, what else? Does we have his BKB now? He does. He's got another 1,500 gold. Uh, Faith, looks like I might get picked off here. Uphill miss. Nice. Oh, that's a BKB force from Resolution. That's pretty. That's a pretty expensive <laughs> BKB charge. Yeah, it is. Wasn't even, find it, wasn't even able to find the Disruptor, so Faith just going to go reset himself, stick with his teammates. Uh, I mean, the Disruptor's positioning here has been really good, especially when they were going and pushing that Tier 3 mid when Nubi was able to actually take out and expose the racks. The disruptor's positioning is really what allowed them to take that fight with that amazing Static Storm to set up for the Burrow Strike Epi. Yeah, and then a, a Dream Call used as well for... Planet Odd, just kind of, they're poking and prodding. Those last two attempts that they made on the newbie side of the map were so successful, it feels like they're just trying to replicate that success, but maybe not with the same level of patience. Uh, the nice thing for newbie is that they now have the BKB on the Dragon Knight, so he can actually kind of go and, and split push a little bit more securely. Of course, it sucks to pop BKB charges uh, to have to escape from a gank, but... You know, if you, if you have to, he does have that, that opportunity. DK just going to be working on an AC here. Underlord has a pipe picked up. So I think the newbie timing is still pretty strong, but unfortunately... Actually, I don't even know if they have to wait out the Aegis on Planet Odd. Again, they have this problem that they don't really have much of a front line. And so I feel like once newbie get in there, if they can successfully kill the Invoker once, then uh, I feel like they're, they're kind of A-OK. -okay. I should be able to bring him down again with the amount of lockdown that they have, though a lot of this comes down to the newbie supports. They're squishy, uh, they have a lot of impact in the team fights, but if they get brought down, then I think it, it could also be newbie that, that crumble in the opposite direction, so we'll have to see. Yeah, so, I mean, Planet Odd, they're positioning themselves really far forward. They're not just going to sit back and let newbie walk over them. They're going to keep fighting, and now Invoker pushed up all the way to the Tier 3, forcing back that TP from Pit Lord. Uh -huh. And everyone's coming in now. Kaka going to be moving forward, makes his way back up onto the high ground. Tornado clips the Pit Lord, but two heroes trapped in the Static Storm. SECC's Dragon formed up BKB, but Resolution is going to town. Kills off the Disruptor. Four heroes caught in that Dream Coil. And now KP, fresh out of mana, just going to be trying to keep his teammates alive. Resolution now trapped into that Pit of Malice. Mugi goes forward, and oh, there's the Epi! The Burrow Strike brings him right where he wants to be. They pop the Aegis. Now Soxa just tries to go dance for her life, but will be killed off. And Clinks respawns and should be able to get Shane stunned down and picked off as well. So nice try from Planet Odd, but three heroes going down, trading only for the Disruptor. Oh my god, and now they're just going to Dark Rift towards mid. There's Perfect. already a creep wave there. It's being pushed in. There's no buyback available for the Invoker. And as much as it was looking good for Planet Odd, it immediately swings for Newbie. Their lineup is so tanky. The Healing Ward doing so much work in that fight, along with the mech and the pipe. And it looks like this should be a lane of racks. Yeah, again, that was the buyback for the Klings, too. So if they can actually get him in an unfavorable position and kill him off, so much of Planet Odd's damage is off the table because there's still 40 seconds before Wii's back up. These racks are totally toast, and we'll see what else Newbie's going to push for next. Yeah, I don't know if they can get too much more. They probably want that shrine uh, over on the side there, you know, uh, over by the, the secret shop for the Radiant, but 
other than that. Really nice fight. They're getting more control as well among their cores. And, I mean, you just look at this fight. We had a missed burrow strike to start from Kaka. Really nice play from Wii. He gets the meatball down. It does plenty of damage, or it looks like it's going to do tons of damage. And then the mech comes in, and then the pipe comes in. The healing ward is staying up on the high ground this entire time, and they just can't finish anybody off. As Triple C is standing in the middle, Kaka comes in with the huge epicenter locking in Weeha, and it just goes to show again that the Aegis on the Invoker, without the sustain from Odd and without the AoE control that they would normally get from their, you know, their offlane hero. Uh, not really having that in this game for the puck, and Newbie just sort of out sustain them in the fight. That's what they've got. They've got three big beefy idiots as their lineup, so <laughs> they're really hard to kill. Yeah, Planet Odd, I mean, how do they recover from that? It just seems so lethal. They had to burn buybacks. They put themselves in a pretty vulnerable position, and Newbie, they called their bluff. Yeah, they got a. At this point, I think Planet Odd actually have to play pretty crazy. They have to, uh, you know, maybe they have to buy a gem if they can afford it. They have to try and go for every pickoff that's presented to them because they just can't afford to wait around. You know, newbie, if they get another five man push going, that's probably going to be another lane of racks. And I think at that point, the game is very, very secure for them. So, all right, what's newbie going to be up to here? Are they going to just be going for another five man smoke? It's actually coming off cooldown in the disruptor's backpack, so looks like that's going right, to be the play. Right away. Yeah. Now that ward, I don't believe caught it. That radiant ward right there. So radiant, they're just going to be, you know, anticipating something going on. Um, we hopefully is not the one to eat it here. He can't afford two deaths immediately in a row. Sitting there in the tree line, not going to be breaking any smokes. Instead, popping the tornado onto the creep wave. But there's a deep dive here. They want to go in onto resolution. He's trapped, He's caught out of the back. jungle. Oh, that's a dieback for him. Dead for 80 seconds, and there's nothing he can do about it. Newbie going to push their advantage, go down to the bot lane, and take out that one remaining tier two. This underlord pick is so good for newbie this game i feel like you know they looked at what planet odd were doing with the nature's profit and how that worked into their overall play style and they looked at the underlord and said this is absolutely perfect we can spam out lanes we have a hero that without boots of travel can kind of be in two places at once to be able to both defend and be ready to join the the team for the team fight and it, it's worked out so nicely for, for Newbie here. Tornado totally off the mark. Now, Wii's going to pop an early BKB. They've got to make something happen with this BKB duration, or else he just can't fight. Now, SCCC caught with the Deafening Glass, caught with the Meatball, forced a little bit out of position. Just going to regroup and go back with his team. Soxa moves forward, is able to go, and uh, grab that Frostbite onto Moogie, but Moogie just going to Manta it off. The tower is completely done. And now let's see what they're able to do with the racks. Planet Odd, they just got to sit by and watch. They don't have the fighting power just yet. Crystal Maiden caught it on her own and killed. And there's going to be another beautiful burrow strike into the static zone with an Omni Slash bouncing around. Oh, it's not looking good. Newbie able to go and kill off three heroes. The Clink still in the grave from the last death. And it looks like we could be getting close to a GG for game number one. Again, this is the grand finals and potentially Planet Odd's TI invite on the line. Yeah, I think the other thing for Newbie is that this is a strategy that they haven't necessarily... It, haven't necessarily shown us just yet. It's very similar to a lot of their other overall strats with the... Oh, it's you know, all down to yeah. Wii here. He's going to be going in. They will be able to kill off that Disruptor. He's going out for 50 seconds, but look at that reinitiation from the Sand King. Newbie, they have just completely read Planet Odd like yeah, a book. And there's the GG coming in for game number one. <laughs> Let's it all go back to the fountain, guys. In favor of Newbie. Yeah, there's just going to be the Dark Rift away. They did their <laughs> job. They got the Ancient. They're done. They're going to go relax. Yeah, so, I mean, for Newbie, I feel